everybody. Uh, we're ready for our next talk. Uh, so we got Dan from RIM. Um, I think he'll tell, him, tell us more about himself, hopefully. <laughs> I, I heard he likes long walks on the beach. All right. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Dan Silvestru, former CTO and co-founder of Tiny Hippos, uh, creator of Ripple, and now I'm the Ripple hacker at RIM. So uh, I'll start by saying cheers. Because most conferences, I have to wait until after we're done talking to drink. So this is great. All right, so I'm going to start by giving you guys a little bit of history, kind of where we came from. So we're web guys. Um, everyone at Tiny Hippos was a web developer. We came from the web. We were used to our web tooling. The way that we worked is pretty much synonymous with instant gratification. We write a line of code, we hit refresh, and we get to see on our screen do the happy dance and move on. Um, and then, in late 2009, we found out that you could use web technology to build mobile apps. Uh, like Gord said earlier in the day, we started off with the Jill platform, which then became WAC, so on and so forth. And we're like, wow, this is brilliant. Because, and we latched onto it right away. It was, hey, you know, this is the one common denominator between all of these various platforms as a web browser. Now, they were kind of crappy back then, but we knew they were going to get better and better and better. Um, and so we kind of bet the farm on it, so much so that we double mortgaged our house. Um, and we're like, wow, we're so close, so close to being able to use the technology that we know and that we love and that we're passionate about. I know it's a little subtle, eh? Um, <laughs> and take that and build awesome mobile apps. And then we got to the tooling and went, holy crap, I feel like I just hit a porta potty doing 20 miles an hour. Um, it was, everything was there if you're building for native, right? So we had debugging and, you know, your IDE as heavy as it is for most of those, you know, like Xcode and um, whatnot. Uh, but at least you had great integration with the emulator and then, you know, debugging and you could do all of that. And as soon as you put a web view in there, black box, you had no idea what was going on. So you would have, you know, and, and then it was really, really costly as well to do this kind of testing. So basically you, had to, you wrote a whole bunch of code because then you had to build it, you know, package it, deploy it over the air to a device or to your emulator. Um, only to click through a couple of buttons and have your screen go black and scratch your head and go, I have no idea what the hell went wrong. Um, and we were stuck with like the old school way of debugging, right? Where we were just like, oh, alert, I'm, I got here. Okay, now I'm this far. And what the crap am I even doing here? Um, so it, it very much felt to me like we were back, you know, in the 80s, um, you know, with the old arcane tooling that, that we had. Um, and yet, we're kind of scratching our heads going, wait a minute, you know, we're using web tech to build these mobile apps. How come we can't actually test where web tech runs, which is in the browser? Um, so one of the co-founders, uh, Brent, um, he was still in university at the time, and he needed to take some time off so that he could go and solve a real world problem with code. You know, it's one of those university things. Um, and he's like, I'm going to go build an MVC PHP framework. So like, wait, crazy, look, we have a real problem here. Um, what if we just somehow manage to insert some stuff into the browser so that by the time your app starts running, all the APIs it's expecting are there. Maybe we resize the screen a little bit. And then, bam, your app thinks it's running on a mobile device when it's actually running in the browser and we have access to all the tooling that we've all grown up with. Um, so that's where Ripple came from. Um, and we kind of started it, and uh, I think we named it Jillified the first time, because we were Jill platform. And then we thought, no, that was kind of silly and gay. So we went and named it the Mobilator, because that sounded way better. Um, but that brought, you know, images of the apocalypse and whatnot. So then we ended up with Ripple eventually, and we got acquired by RIM uh, in March of uh, last year. And then the awesomeness followed. So three core things um, kind of happened once we came into RIM, and you know, they were one of the big reasons as well why we agreed to kind of come into a big corporation uh, rather than just trying to grow this on our own. First and foremost, Ripple is open source, um, and that happened several months after we got acquired, and that's a big step for RIM in general because before us, there was the Torch guys that did the whole open source thing with WebKit, and then there was WebWorks, 
and then it was Ripple. So it was, it was really cool. Having it open source means that it's also free to all of the developers that want to use it. And to us as developers, that was a big thing. We hate paying for tooling. We always did, but somehow we need to pay the mortgage. So uh, this really allowed us to open it up and have everyone be able to use it. And the most important part, and the reason I'm actually on stage today, is RIM agreed to keep it cross-platform and open. So we support multiple devices, more than just the BlackBerry devices. Um, and we support multiple platforms. Right now, it's uh, BlackBerry WebWorks, everything from you know, the um, uh, handheld to playbook to uh, BlackBerry 10, and of course, Cordova slash PhoneGap. And so there's Ripple. Now, I might have to do some resizing here. One more. Can you guys see that? Yeah, all right, it's good enough. So there's Ripple. Um, it's just that, unfortunately, this projector runs at a lower resolution than my mother runs on her laptop, so. Um, all right, so it kind of Ripple. I'm not gonna really dive too much into it. So before I really dive into it, once more time, just by a show of hands, prior to Gord talking, how many people have heard of Ripple? And now, how many people have actually used it? Yeah. All right. So there is some uh, benefit in me running through some stuff, good. So um, yeah, anyway, we give you some information about the platform that you're running. We have all of our different platforms supported here, and then a whole slew of different devices per platform that we support. Um, so let's get right into it. So we do some voodoo to get in there. Um, so we run as a Chrome extension. And uh, through uh, being able to execute script on start means we get to inject some script very quickly into the DOM. And that script really just does a check and says, hey, did you enable Ripple on this thing? And if the answer is yes, then we jump in there and right away do a document.open, zoink, can basically kill everything. Uh, document.write, our injection, which is really all the HTML that is the UI front end. Then we boot up uh, a new iframe. We put all your stuff into the iframe, we size it, uh, we put some pretty UI sugar around it to kind of make it look like it's sitting inside a device. And then we have a unit called the emulator bridge, which then essentially marshals all the calls between the iframe and the top window for any API calls that you guys do. And that's what lets us interact with all the cool UI widgets that you guys see on the right on the left-hand side. So at the end of the day, what that means is that we kind of you know, violate the browser a little bit. Um, doesn't feel good, but uh, it works. And ultimately, it doesn't complain too much. I think we're okay. Um, so, talk is cheap. I don't actually know how I'm doing on time, so someone's gonna have to flag me down when I'm down to 10 or five minutes. Um, so, um, I picked Reveal JS is my slide deck because the cool thing is it's all in HTML and then I can enable Ripple over it as you guys have seen and I can actually get some cool stuff going. Um, so this is our geolocation um, emulation. So one of the things that we wanted to do in Ripple and because it's pretty core to us is that it struck us that all the mobile emulators, um, even though they weren't all that good with doing stuff for web, um, didn't really behave like a real phone. So if I wanted to check geolocation stuff in Waterloo, even though I'm here in Portland, because I've built an app that shows me the most relevant, you know, taco trucks that exist in Waterloo. Well, we don't have food trucks, but hypothetically. Um, so I want to be able to simulate that, right? So the code that you're actually seeing here is running. I don't know if you guys can read it. It's a little bit small. I apologize for that. Um, but I can move my map around and pretend I'm somewhere else and then update my map again, and it will move, and then I can emulate geolocation. Um, beyond that, though, um, other things that struck us was uh, accelerometer, for example. So a lot of emulators want to have like a shake button. So I can click the shake button and I think shakes, and if I want to do something on shake, then you know, it will do it. But what if you needed finer grain control because you're actually building a game that's going to move a little, I don't know, eyeball around. Um, so we actually, I took this code from one of the sample apps um, off of uh, the PhoneGap site. So I can kind of do this. And I was, you'll notice I, there's a vibrate thing as well, and you know I kind of suck at this game, so I'm gonna stop. Um, reset this guy. 
Um, so th that kind of gave us the ability to now say, all right, look, we can start using the emulator as if we had more of a phone in our hand and, and actually test the kind of applications that we all want to write. So the, the three APIs I'm showing here, that these were the first two, are just the ones that I think, and this is a gut feel, uh, the Cordova guys can really correct me on this, but I think that they're the most popular APIs that are being used today. So that's you know geolocation, accelerometer, and then image capture. Image capture actually was just recently added. So then I can do stuff like this. I can take a picture, and this brings me actually to our motto for emulating stuff. We're emulating it from perspective of a developer. When we take a picture with Cordova, you were basically invoking the native implementation of taking a picture, and you can go and you basically, as a developer, you have no control of that. You just let native do what it does. So in our case, this is native. So um, by the way, if anyone wants to help us with the UI, um, that'd be awesome. So I click select, I grab my picture. I thought it was oddly appropriate. Um, I select it. And there it is. And that's the equivalent of having taken a picture. I mean, at the end of the day, you issue a call saying, go take a picture. Someone takes a picture, and the picture is returned, and then you have a URL you can use, and Bob's your uncle. There it is. And of course, that brings me to Web Inspector. So that was kind of the core tooling that we were used to in the browser. Web Inspector on WebKit, Braced Browsers, and uh, you know, Firebug on Firefox. And I'm not going to dive into it too much, uh, mainly because Paul Irish has done a way better job than I at kind of diving deep into Web Inspector and what it can do. And um, Patrick Mueller earlier today kind of talked about Winery and you know, I Web Inspector. So there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, but I mean, it's really we need to have the ability to kind of inspect elements very quickly, go in and do things like this, um, or you know, jump into the console. And the cool thing in the latest versions of Web Inspector is that you can actually dive right into the frame which contains your application and do stuff like type in, uh, oops, navigator, and then you can actually inspect the entire object if you want. Um, and in this case, because we're actually running in a playbook on Cordova, Cordova actually sits on top of uh, BlackBerry WebWorks. So you'll actually find the BlackBerry object in here as well where you can go and so in some cases, you might actually want to not just use Cordova if you're on BlackBerry and actually want to use something that BlackBerry exposes but that Cordova doesn't necessarily have a plug-in for, so you can do that as well. Um, so that's it for Web Inspector. I'm not going to dive much deeper than that. Um, platforms, I've kind of talked about this. So we do support WebWorks, obviously. Um, everything from the handhelds to the playbook and now BlackBerry 10, we're actively working, we're feverishly working on implementing all of the new uh, WebWorks, BlackBerry 10 APIs. We support Cordova, obviously, as well, and I'm actually pretty happy to announce that we're almost at full Cordova 2.0 support at this point. NW3C, of course, is just the mobile web, no APIs, but now through Web Inspector, you have the ability to actually swap the uh, user agent, and then you can actually get real rendering of, of what your mobile site should look like inside of Ripple. Um, and that brings me to Tizen, which uh, well, I was really impressed. They, they, they fork Ripple and they uh, created a whole new UI um, kind of theme and added the entire Tizen platform on there. Um, unfortunately, they only have Tizen, so if there's anyone here from Tizen or Tizen or however it's pronounced, um, come talk to me because I would really, really, really love for you guys to contribute your changes back into the project so that we can have the Tizen platform actually part of Ripple as a whole. I think it would be really great for the community as well. So that brings me to our Cordova APIs that we support. As you guys can see, we support pretty much all of them. The only thing that we don't support is uh, audio capture, video capture, and media. And we are working on those, and we really should have them soon, I hope. Um, a couple of things that are worth noting. Uh, file, that was all Phil Mai. I'm, I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. I hope so. Awesome. Um, so that was over a hack. We can get to that in a moment. Um, and then the whole capture image thing, that was Gord hacking recently. So uh, we, yeah, we got a lot of great stuff in there. And there's been a lot of talk about plugins um, lately. And uh, how can we, as Ripple, emulate plugins that we don't even know about? 
Um, so that's kind of been a thing that's been nagging us for quite a while. Um, until Gord kind of really jumped in and, and truly embraced Cordova and started contributing full time to it. Um, and with, there's the whole concept of the exec function. So pretty much every call goes through exec. And because we honeypot it, it means that we can capture every call that goes in there. And if it tries to call something that we don't know about, we kind of throw our hands up and go, I don't know what this is. But I tell you what, you do. So how about this? On my success call, that's especially like info.stuff. So I'm going to go stuff. Pretty cool. Hey, because I'm Canadian. And then you can invoke success or fail. I'm going to invoke success in this case. And my success just calls an alert. So even if we don't emulate a particular plugin or a particular API that you guys really, really need, um, we provide you at least a mechanism now so that you can type in what you expect to receive back from that plugin and move on your merry way and actually be able to continue through your testing and emulation and all that. So, oops. A lot of this work has kind of been the result of a hack weekend. So, um, or at least the end parts, like the, you know, bringing in um, the image capture and file API and truing up the whole contacts API. We had uh, Phil and Michael come down to Waterloo and then we uh, took them up to the cottage where we shot a lot of guns. I decided not to include any of those pictures for fear that they might kill me. Um, and we just hacked on the beach for uh, a good two days and got a lot of stuff done. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff. And um, anyway, so that kind of, so Apache and Cordova in general um, and all the work that was done there. And rather than screwing this up, I decided to actually put on the screen. I'll just read this so you guys don't have to worry about it. But basically, we've done a lot of work um, on Cordova with the help of the former Nitobi guys, and we very strongly believe that Ripple's natural home is inside of the Apache Software Foundation, ideally as a sub-project of Cordova. Now, that being said, this is the first time that us at RIM are doing something like this, and we are ultra-focused on BlackBerry 10. So we've been working very closely with Nitobi guys, and we we'll hope to be working very closely with the Cordova community as a whole. And I'm kind of here to say, I really hope I have all of your support to help us get through this and make sure that we do this the right way. Thank you. So I'm really excited about that. I'm uber excited. The other thing that we did on this hack weekend was kind of play around a little bit um, with the whole concept of emulate.phonegap.com. And uh, Yohei came up with this awesome, awesome yeah. mascot. Um, I have about 200 stickers. Um, so if you want one, come and get one. Uh, I also have seven t-shirts, by the way. So just come and see me. They just say dev. Just, then you can all look like Gord, except for the hair. <laughs> um, so what is emulate.phonegrab.com? Well, the idea behind it, really, um, is that we wanted kind of a simple way to introduce Ripple and be able to kind of automate the process of getting people to start testing their applications with Ripple. So the site exposes a very simple API where, excuse me, if you pass it, the URL and the platform that you want to enable that URL on, uh, it will basically auto-enable Ripple as long as you have it installed. So if you visit the site without Chrome, we ask you to go get Chrome. If you have Chrome, but you don't have Ripple, then we'll ask you to go and install Ripple. Once you have all of the above, we'll just auto-enable the URL, uh, or sorry, auto-enable Ripple over the URL, and then you can actually start testing. That could be local or remote. So for example, if I click on phonegap.com here, it'll just enable Ripple, and then we can just test it and do great things. How am I doing on time, by the way? That's fine. All right, that's all right, because I'm pretty much done. So um, I will publish these slides, um, hopefully before I start drinking too much um, today, so that you guys can all have them. They'll be on my GitHub account. It's uh, GitHub slash Dan Slavestru. Um, Blackberry.github.com is our 
main open source page. Um, Blackberry's got a whole lot of projects that are open source right now. Go over there, check them out. That's also where you'll find our ICLA and our CCLA, so that in case you want to contribute. We are looking for contributors for Ripple. If you guys are interested, if you're building a plugin for PhoneGap that you know, runs on all the platforms, or um, you know, it'd be great to see those kinds of contributions into Ripple. I think it, you know, we'd really, really love to see that. Um, and then there's also links on here for um, the download for Ripple. There's really two locations. There's one that's hosted on the BlackBerry website and another one that's hosted on the um, app Chrome App Store. And of course, I'm mary.phonegab.com, and you guys can follow me on Twitter. I'm confusement. It's kind of a general state of mind more than anything else. Um, so with that, I had to put a Batman slide in. So <laughs> thank you very much. Come see me after. Get some stickers. <laughs>